Hi, my name is Mark Keen. I'm here today to show you our 6-inch gravel pump floating dredge. This one's set up pretty interesting. We've got it set up with a double 6-inch intake and we've actually tested this in a 4-inch so I'm kind of excited to see how it's going to work in a 6-inch but it did a good job. Um, i give you some close-ups of the machine here. Basically we're running it off of roughly about a hundred horsepower Deutsch diesel engine. It's got a six inch gravel pump that can pass around uh, I think about a five and a half inch sphere directly through the pump. What's nice about this particular unit is it's set up with a uh, as you can see right there it's got like a clutch system on it. So you can start the engine, you get the engine good and warmed up and engage and disengage the uh, pump. with two or dual 263 compressors and each one of those is compressors are capable of carrying you know two divers down to about oh probably anywhere from 40 to 60 feet deep. Okay here's a shot of the other side of the dredge. Uh, you can see the clutch lever. I'm going to zoom in on that and that's how you would engage and disengage the uh, engine. I'm sorry, to disengage the, the pump. And you'll notice that there's, uh, you've got a throttle control. It's kind of covered up with hoses and stuff because we test ran it. But basically you've got a fuel line right here and that's what goes to the bottom of the fuel tank. And up here, this particular port is the return line. So that hose would drop to the top of the fuel tank. I don't know if you can see it here in the camera, but there's just a, you just shove the hose through that top hole there. And then the lower hose just clamps onto that lower fitting right there. Okay, I'm going to walk you through a, a little bit of the basic plumbing on the machine. Um, what we have here is you have, in this particular unit, two six-inch hoses. Now you'll notice that the six-inch swivel tips Hey Tim, you do me a favor, can you pick this tip up and rotate it for me? Okay, and you can see, here, let me get a show a little better there. Okay, now show how the back end pivots. See that rear end swivels, that allows you to position the tip in any position. And you'll also know there's a suction braking flap. Remember, this thing has so much power that if a rock were to get stuck on the suction tip, then you wouldn't have the strength to pull it off. But if you break that flap, you pull the flap back, you break the suction so that you can uh, suck the, so you can pull rocks and, and debris off the suction tip. Uh, swing the tip around the other way for me, Tim. All right, perfect. Now you can see the intake there. That's what actually sucks up the rocks. Because we have two sixes going into a single uh, six inch line, I actually have, I think about a four inch or a four and a half inch ID ring on the intake right there. Now keep in, in mind, both of those, you only see a three foot hose, but those suction hoses, the, I'm sorry, the six inch hoses could be up to a hundred or even a hundred and fifty foot long each. And uh, that one line there going to the power jet will probably be about that length most of the time. You want to have, you know, the, the individual six inch lines longer with that one in between the Y splitter and the power jet. Now you'll notice we've got this machine plumbed up. You've got a motor and pump here. You've got a motor and pump here, and all this pump system here is doing is it's used to prime the pump. So the way it works is you have the intake of the pump right there. Normally you would have a three inch foot valve and hose assembly, and you prime that pump by just normal procedures, just pumping the foot valve up and down until you, until you have water coming out the discharge. And then you can go ahead and start your engine, okay? Now you'll notice What's the way the plumbing is going is we have the three inch pressure hose running out of the discharge of the pump going into the power jet here. Now you'll notice here that the power jet is just suspended underneath the decks here and it's a short jet and all we're doing is we're basically forcing water into the main pump. Now there's our main gravel pump right there. Before you engage the clutch on the engine, the pump has to be flooded. So we first prime this motor and pump. Then we 
get it, then we, get, then we start the engine, and the, the high pressure water shoots through here, goes through here, through the power jet, forces the water up that six inch hose, and it floods the top of the pump. Once the pump is full of water, then you can grab your, your lever or your clutch lever and engage the pump, and the system should start pumping. But you always have to have the pump flooded before you start the engine. Okay. Now that we've talked about the basic plumbing on the tread, I'm going to walk you through the basic plumbing on the air system. With any air system, it's very important that you always suck in clean air. So what we've done is we have remotely mounted the air intakes. So we have our four air filters mounted up on a tower far away from the engine so we don't have any chance of getting any carbon monoxide gas. And it's very simple. We just have four individual hoses. They come down here. They are underneath the decks of the dredge, and they're kind of weaved in and out through the frame, keep them out of the way. And then the four intakes are coming in through here. All the small system is designed for one thing, to give us as clean of air as possible. Okay? The next system is we have two outputs for air. Okay? Each air compressor is driving two separate air tanks. Normally we just have one air tank. However, with this particular unit, there, since we have two separate uh, six-inch intake lines, we could have a hundred foot of six-inch hose going this way and a hundred foot of hose going that way. We, we're set putting two separate air systems, and on these we build a crossover tube as well, so they always have the same pressure. So again, here's the intake, and then we have our pressure coming through your discharge lines. The air pressure is probably somewhere about 80 to 100 psi in the air reserve tank. If you want to come over here closer, Tim. Okay, you'll notice we have an air gauge. We have a couple quick release fittings on here, and these are just quick snap fittings. They're easy to attach and detach. So we have our, our 100 foot air line here, so I'm going to walk over here. Now, this is not a, not a totally standard system. This is really deluxe. This is the way it should be set up. See, when you set up a dredge and you have a lot of power on it, it's very important that you have a very good communication system with the diver. Um, a normal gold dredge, you have good power, but this thing will literally tear your arm off. So you have to have a lot of control and a lot of communication with the diver. So this one, we actually have it set up with an uh, underwater communication system. This unit has a built-in, it's actually an ocean reef mask. It has a, a built-in microphone and a built-in earpiece, okay? So what this will allow you to do is, it's, well, it's, I think I believe it's called full duplex. You'll be able to talk back and forth to uh, the other diver full-time, and you'll be able to talk to the, the top man full-time. And it's actually a fairly simple system. You can see we mounted, a, we mounted a mic inside the mask. This is just a page button. It's kind of like a warning if you need to get the uh, top man's attention and this is your earpiece that you hear through. And it's actually like talking through a walkie-talkie. It's fairly simple, except it's full, full duplex so you don't have to push any buttons. That's just if you want to make a loud beep for the diver. So here's your full face mask, and then that ties into your 100-foot air line and ties into your, your air hose. This is just a plug to tap into the... Uh, to tap into the the rope, this is your, your comm rope here. And it's really simple, this basically just plugs in like that. It's a waterproof connection. I'm not sure if they call for dielectric grease, but I would consider putting some on myself. And basically what you would do is you would probably just duct tape this to your, to your air hose, what I would probably do. And leave a little extra around the head so you don't have anything flopping your way. And then you have a box here that you just basically turn on and testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. And that's coming through the mic right there. And you can hear, I can actually hear it through the speaker right now. So it's a fairly, fairly nice system. It's called an Ocean Reef Alpha Pro. And you can plug two divers into it. This particular customer, since he has two six inch hoses, 